Hello friends, how are you all? Hope everything's okay with you. Love you, Asha here. So for today's video, we would like to share with you guys these interesting topics about how to grow crops on Mars if we are able to live on the red planet. So hope you like these interesting topics and let's all find out. Bye for now. If we successfully land on Mars, could we live there? It seems like everyone has Mars in mind these days. NASA wants to send humans to the red planet by 2030, and SpaceX wants to get there even sooner, with plans to have people there by 2024. The atmosphere of Mars is mostly carbon dioxide. The surface of the planet is too cold to sustain human life. And the planet's gravity is a mere 38% of Earth's. Plus, the atmosphere on Mars is equivalent to about 1% of the Earth's atmosphere at sea level. That makes getting to the surface tricky. How will the NASA get there? How can we hope to survive against such odds? Traveling to Mars is just the first leg of the journey. When Earth and Mars are closest to each other, the trip will take a mere 260 days. Once we get there, the challenge becomes landing on the planet's surface. How to grow crops on Mars if we are to live on the red planet? Once, if humans do make it to Mars, a major challenge for any colony will be to generate a stable supply of food. The enormous cost of launching and resupplying resources from Earth will make that impractical. Humans on Mars will need to move away from complete reliance on shipped cargo and achieve a high level of self-sufficient and sustainable agriculture. The recent discovery of liquid water on Mars, which adds new information to the question of whether we will find life on the planet, does raise the possibility of using such supplies to help grow food. But water is only one of many things we will need if we are to grow enough food on Mars. What sort of food? Previous work has suggested the use of microbes as a source of food on Mars. The use of hydroponic greenhouses and controlled environmental systems, similar to one being tested on board the International Space Station to grow crops, is another option. Mars, Earth-like but not Earth Although Mars is the most Earth-like of our neighboring planets, Mars and Earth differ in many ways. The gravity on Mars is around a third of that on Earth. Mars receives about half of the sunlight we get on Earth, but much higher levels of harmful ultraviolet and cosmic rays. The surface temperature of Mars is about minus 60 Celsius, and it has a thin atmosphere primarily made of carbon dioxide. Unlike Earth's soil, which is humid and rich in nutrients and microorganisms that support plant growth, Mars is covered with regolith. This is an arid material that contains perchlorate chemicals that are toxic to humans. Also, despite the latest subsurface lake find, water on Mars mostly exists in the form of ice, and the low atmospheric pressure of the planet makes liquid water boil at around 5 Celsius. Plants on Earth have evolved for hundreds of millions of years and are adapted to terrestrial conditions, but they will not grow well on Mars. This means that substantial resources that will be scarce and priceless for humans on Mars like liquid water and energy would need to be allocated to achieve efficient farming by artificially creating optimal plant growth conditions. Adapting Plants to Mars 
A more rational alternative is to use synthetic biology to develop crops specifically for Mars. This formidable challenge can be tackled and fast-tracked by building a plant, Focus Mars Biofoundry. With adequate funding and active international collaboration, such an advanced facility could improve many of the traits required for making crops thrive on Mars with a decade. This includes improving photosynthesis and photo protection to help protect plants from sunlight and UV rays, as well as drought and cold tolerance in plants and engineering high-yield functional crops. We also need to modify microbes to detoxify and improve the Martian soil quality. Benefits for Earth Developing the next generation of crops required for sustaining humans on Mars would also have great benefits for people on Earth. The growing global population is increasing the demand for food. To meet this demand, we must increase agricultural productivity, but we have to do so without negatively impacting our environment. The best way to achieve these goals would be to improve the crops that are already widely used. Setting up facilities such as the proposed Mars Biofoundry would bring immense benefit to the turnaround time of plant research with implications for food security and environmental protection. So the main beneficiary of efforts to develop crops for Mars would be Earth. How to grow vegetables on Mars? Plants grown in patting mix under the same environmental conditions serve as controls and the simulant regolith, the soil, is based to a large extent on volcanic rock from the Mojave Desert. However, the actual regolith on Mars contains peculates that are dangerous to humans. So once on Mars, this hazardous chemical will have to be removed before the actual soil is used. Also, the sunlight on Mars is weaker, which affects growing conditions. So the Villanova students took all of the right steps to replicate Martian greenhouse conditions and accounted for as many variables as possible. All with the goal of answering the question, can plants be grown on Mars in Martian soil under reduced ambient light? Before we answer that, let's take a big picture look at Mars. It's safe to say that environment there isn't exactly welcoming. Overall, Mars is small, about one-tenth of Earth's mass cold and average minus 50 degrees Celsius and desolate. It has a very thin carbon dioxide, rich atmosphere that's about 190th as dense of Earth's. Mars is roughly 141 million miles from the Sun. Earth is 93 million miles, meaning the maximum intensity of sunlight on Mars is about 43% the strength of the sunlight on Earth. There's some good news, however, as beneficial carbon dioxide and nitrogen make up about 95% and 2.6% of the planet's atmosphere respectively. However, without any ozone on the Martian atmosphere, the greenhouse windows would need to block harmful solar ultraviolet radiation. A few billion years ago, Mars boasted a more hospitable environment, complete with oceans, a temperate climate, and quite possibly, life. It has since lost most of its atmosphere and water inventories, and there is currently no water on its surface. Water or ice is present beneath the surface, however, as well as in the planet's icy polar regions. These harsh conditions make it necessary for all plants to be grown in heated, pressurized greenhouses with significant compensation made for atmosphere, 
humidity, and water. In their greenhouse experiments, the Villanova students took strenuous measures to create an environment that's both plant-friendly and similar to what would be found in greenhouses on Mars. They ensured, for instance, that plants receive roughly the same amount of sunlight as they would on Mars. Given these requirements, the students also experimented with growing some plants hydroponically. The students found that their success rates could be improved with two enhancements, augmenting sunlight by using multi-wavelength lens and loosening the dense, MSS by adding padding soil or earthworm feces. Based on all these factors, students were able to eliminate certain vegetables from consideration. For instance, the low light on Mars does not lend itself well to growing plants that require full sun, which include favorites like tomatoes, beans, legumes, corn, or many root plants. Potatoes largely don't thrive in the simulant soil and low light conditions, but sweet potatoes do a little better. The students found that dandelions would flourish on Mars and have significant benefits. They grow quickly, every part of the plant is edible, and they have high nutritional value. Other thriving plants include microgreens, lettuce, arugula, spinach, peas, garlic, kale, and onions. Conditions on Mars for humans, let alone farmers, are far from easy. The difficult planet certainly isn't a natural home for us, and growing sustenance there would be a complicated task. That said, it's not impossible, and it's comforting to know that we could develop and maintain our own sources of food on a distant landscape. The possibility of growing hops in barley doesn't hurt either. So that's it for today my friends thank you all so much for watching thank you all for your support hope you like our video for today and if you're new to our channel please don't forget to subscribe like comment and don't forget to turn on your notification bell to get notified whenever we post our new videos thank you all so much again and see you on our next video